Defilers! Ye dare enter the kingdom of Lud! Unannounced! And you must be Lud, if I'm not mistaken. Son of a... Shall address us as King Lud! Followers have been humbled in defeat, yet we are still a king! You're a first-generation mutant, handcrafted by the Master himself. This is Lud. I imagine it'd be shorter. A lot shorter. Ye have befell the blood of our subjects with medicines of the old times. Uh, a single day ago, these trespasses would have brought your death! And what about today? <clears throat> today, we are broken. Uh, thrice, uh, we have seen horrors wrought by those bearing the cursed number uh, 13. Uh, a century ago, the master perished in fire kindled by the ones they call <clears throat> Vault Dweller. Uh, uh, though King Lud was not there, we felt it in our mind. When the Master died, the first generation super mutants were scattered. You were left leaderless. Yes, two score years ago. We watched from broken hills as the setting sun was dwarfed by the Chosen One's retribution. The defeat of the Enclave. <laughs> Since the Chosen One rekindled the fires of the Great War, we have walked the road that connects this river with the West. We, uh, I, taught those who would listen about the downfall of the old world. Uh, factories spewed weapons, uh, and men wielded power they did not forge themselves. The humans of the old world were fools! <laughs> did they make the bombs? They unleashed uh, cage the atoms? Hmm? No. <laughs> Understand the fire their hands did seize. <laughs> no. <laughs> we hammered the metal of this sword with our own hands. It is pure. Now, a machine. Wearing the face of the Vault Dweller lays waste to all we have built. Our knights disappeared on their patrols. Guards vanished from their posts. Then he came with dogs, coated in metal abominations. The innocents were killed in their sleep. The robot with a human brain. The one that killed your people. We're trying to catch it. They say the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Will you help us? What? The hammer? Uh, what? The chain? In what furnace was thy uh, brain? Uh, what? The anvil? What? Dread grasp? Dare its deadly terrors clasp? <laughs> May ye die at the hands of this abomination, or it at yours. I cannot. I think he's done talking. We've done all we can here. Let's not push our luck. Think we'll run into more trouble on this side of the river? Anything NCR intel can tell us, Ranger? Huh? Oh, sorry. I can't get what King Lud said out of my head. It sounded like the android we're chasing didn't just battle with the Luddites, it slaughtered them. But why? The android has killed before. I've seen the aftermath with my own eyes. But in the past, it's only killed to escape, to secure its own freedom. We know the android had a Luddite disguise. Why not use it to pass through King Lud's territory undetected? Why the massacre? I'll tell you why. 
Because that android you're talking about has the brain of the Vault Dweller inside it. The Chosen One has taught me anything. It's that some heroes just like killing. You said it yourself, Ranger. The Vault Dweller was a powerful individual. And if history has taught us anything, it's that powerful individuals sometimes leave a trail of corpses in their wake. And what about King Lud? All that poetry? Half of it sounded like it came out of pre-war books. Half just sounded crazy. Dwarfing the sunset? He was talking about the defeat of the Enclave. A powerful force that's still leaving a trail of bodies today. The oil rig that the Enclave used had once been owned by Poseidon Oil back before the war. In those days, they pumped so much oil out of the ground that they needed huge boats the size of a city to transport it. One such tanker, Poseidon Marine Vessel Valdez, it was called, had sat in San Francisco's harbor, rusting since the war. The Chosen One had to run all over the wasteland, locating gizmos and repair parts to make it run. Even had to infiltrate the Enclave base at Navarro to pilfer a few things. Got themselves a suit of power armor and marched around like a soldier, and no one bat an eye. The Chosen One explored the Enclave oil rig and eventually located the holding cells. Trapped within were the people of the Chosen One's village, Arroyo, and their distant relations, the dwellers of Vault 13. The Enclave was using the villagers to test a modified form of the forced evolutionary virus. The same goo that turned King Lud into a green giant. This version had been altered by the Enclave's chemical core so that it killed anyone who came in contact with it. The people from Vault 13 were a control group of sorts, a gene pool that hadn't been contaminated by the impurities of the wasteland. This control group had similar results. While looking for a way to free these test subjects, the Chosen One discovered the true face of the Enclave, the inbred descendants of six generations of politicians, billionaires, corporate execs, the alleged president and vice president of the United States, and marketing directors. The president was helpful enough to explain that the Enclave intended to release their modified forced evolutionary virus into the atmosphere. The only way for true humans and democracy to be safe is to cleanse the mutants from the globe. We humans will take back that which is rightfully ours. The Enclave considered everyone outside their own little gene pool to be subhuman mutants. Their virus would have killed every human, ghoul, super mutant, everyone in the world except for the Enclave members who had been inoculated by their experiment antidote. Experimental? Apparently, they were still working out the kinks right up to the last minute. The vice president himself volunteered as a test subject for the early trials of the antidote, turned him into what some people called a drooling idiot. The vice president didn't make it off the oil rig, which was probably best for everyone. Did the other bad people survive? No, very few people made out alive. The villagers and people from Vault 13 escaped, but when the Chosen One tried to return to the ship, somebody was there to greet them. You've gotten a lot farther than you should have, but then you haven't met Frank Horgan either. Your ride's over, Mutie. Time to die. <laughs> <laughs>